Hello and welcome. I hope you're doing well. Come and get cozy as I share with you some absolutely terrifying encounters. I post new videos every day, so be sure to hit that subscribe button and the notification bell, and you'll be notified when new daily content arrives on my channel. All right, let's get right into it. At Bighorn Dam on the North Saskatchewan River in Alberta, Ronald C. Gumow came across two 12-foot-tall Bigfeet standing in the middle of the road. Ronald stopped, and the two creatures watched him for a few seconds before they jogged away. On to the next one. The witness drove to 12-foot Davis gravesite, picnic grounds in Peace River in Alberta with a friend. This was at the confluence of the Peace and Smoky Rivers. We walked on the hillside behind the gravesite. No birds were chirping. Everything was silent. Hairs on my neck were standing up. I chose to go to outside toilet facilities while my friend moved back to the car. When I got about two feet from the washroom, I saw a shadow move and heard a heavy outgoing of breath, and there was a musky stench. The toilet facilities were about eight to nine feet high and of a pyramid shape. This thing was standing beside the toilet, and I estimate its height of at least seven to seven and a half feet high. I felt eerie and decided to forget the washroom trip. I started to walk away toward the gravesite. My friend yelled at me to get back in the car as he had been looking in my direction. I turned and looked behind me and felt immediate terror. This thing wasn't a bear. It was on its front arms with its bum up in the air and pushing itself along in an ambling fashion following behind me about four feet away and appeared to be sniffing at me. It was light-haired, of a dark blondish color. It looked not like a bear. Had sparse hair on its body, more hair on its legs and arms. It had an ape-like face, with little hair on the face, with more on the head. The hair looked extremely coarse, almost like a horse's mane in the winter. I quickly ran to the car. We jumped in the car and sped away around the corner and down the hill. As we were speeding away, this thing rose up and tried to chase the car a short way. It was angry, standing straight, not like a bear, more like a human, and it was swinging its arms and screaming. We barely got away from it. It followed us down the hillside a short way. When I came home, I was so upset that I told my mother. She, in turn, passed this information on, and someone went up there the next day but didn't see anything. They found tufts of hair, but that was it. It has been years, and I still have the details of what I saw stuck in my head. And I imagine I always will. A person does not survive that kind of terror without remembering it for the rest of your life. In December, a friend of mine was working with a power company on power lines and observed several large footprints close to power lines outside of town. It was dusk, just starting to turn cold. Cool weather, it had rained earlier in the day. It was very quiet, no birds chirping, very, very silent. The moon was shining. It was very forested, pine, evergreen, short bushes, hills, and a grassy hillside. On to the next one. I was driving alone from my parents' house in Gibbons, Alberta, going home to Slave Lake, Alberta, on Provincial Highway 2. I was a meteorological technician at the time. I was going down to the Salto River crossing and spotted a large animal up ahead on the side of the highway, standing on the snow ridge. It then ran through the snow on two legs at great speed, diagonally in the opposite direction I was going, to the edge of the forest. Stopped, turned around, and stared at me. I was stopped by this time, 
and had a great look. It was about 11 p.m., and the sky was clear with almost a full moon shining. It was very tall, about eight feet, and was covered in dark fur, maybe a dark reddish brown. Its face was bare of fur, and it had a lion-like mane. I was terrified at this point, and took off. I was going to go back and check for footprints the next day, but it snowed about three to four inches. It was about 11 p.m. on a clear night with almost a full moon shining. Close to the highway, about a quarter of a mile before a bridge over the Solano River. The forest is mixed boreal with trees up to 125 feet high. On to the next one. We were living on a farm owned by my father, which is seven and a half miles northwest of the town of Drayton Valley in Alberta, Canada. You can see this property by leaving Drayton Valley. Go north out of town on the highway five miles. Turn left west. Now you're on the highway heading towards Cynthia. Drive one mile, then turn right and go a half a mile, now heading north. It is the second farm on your left. This farm was in the county of Parkland at the time. The Bigfoot walked across my father's farm at about 1 a.m. The month was about February. My husband Ray and I were alone. It was late, and we were heading to bed when we heard the scream from the Bigfoot. I was scared when I heard the Bigfoot scream, and my husband looked out the door right away. He put on his boots and went to track it. I held him back and told him that is not human, what just screamed. He said he knew this. Well, we couldn't see anything. It is the dark of the moon and the yard light is not working. We decided to track it the very next morning. We walked out and saw the Bigfoot was standing only 75 feet away from our home. There at the time on the west side of the garage, it had left its footprints in the snow. We followed the footprints which went through our swamp. The Bigfoot tracks were 18 inches long and 6 and 5 8 inches across. You could see the barefoot and it had five toes just like us, with a heel as a human have. We came upon a tree where the Bigfoot must have rested. It had leaned up to a pine tree but had torn some hair off as it pulled away from the frozen tree. I grabbed the hair and put it in my leather bag. My father came home and I showed him the hair that the Bigfoot left that night. The Bigfoot, as I said, left hair that froze to the tree. I put it in my leather bag and brought it home for my father to see. The Bigfoot scream was very strange as it was like alarming us that it was walking through. My husband said our lights inside might have frightened it. I was scared when it screamed. The sound, I will never forget what the Bigfoot scream sounds like. We had shut the TV off and headed for the bedroom when my husband and I heard the scream the Bigfoot made. The farm had tall timbers of pine, spruce, and poplar trees, but we did not have any trees in the yard or through the trail we followed the Bigfoot in the next morning. The Bigfoot had walked out of our yard on the west side heading northwest toward the cut line and ended up in our swamp. This is a remote area. There is not another farm for five miles by road to the west or 12 miles to the north. On to the next one. I have had two unusual experiences within Paw Tuckaway State Park in New Hampshire. The first was in the summer of 2005 when I worked in the Paw Tuckaway for the summer season. It was a rainy mid-summer day and there was never much activity on those days. 
It was early afternoon after lunch, so roughly 1 or 2 p.m., and a co-worker and I were driving back up to the office from down in the state park. As we reached the area of Mountain Pond, I saw something very large and very fast running across the road, about 500 feet ahead. The thing I remember the most was the stride and the upright position on two legs, not four. It looked like it took three strides gliding across the road on two legs. It was dark and hairy in appearance. But since we were so far away, I didn't get a detailed look at all. My coworker saw the same thing and was petrified. As we pulled up to roughly the same place where it had crossed, my coworker was shook and refused to exit the truck. I got out of the truck for a look and a listen. I heard crashing and thumping through the forest, loud snapping of branches and logs as if this thing was cruising. I gave a shout, and all I got in return was more of the same snapping and thrashing of the forest. It wanted out of sight, which was clear to me. After listening for a few minutes to whatever it was run through the forest, I no longer heard anything. It was on two legs, straight up, not hunched, so it was either a very extra-large, dark, hairy human being running through the forest for fun or something else. It was not a bear. It was not a moose. It was not a deer. I have seen all of those animals before in the wild, and they run on four legs, not two. One more point worth noting is the direction in which the thing I saw was running in. There were no trails, and there are no trails anywhere near the direction it was heading. In fact, there are no roads or houses for many miles in that direction. I was baffled, and my co-worker was admittedly scared. I have only told my dad and a couple of good friends, all of which are just as familiar with the area as I am. My next strange experience might not be as unexpected, but it was certainly more alarming. It was early spring. There were tiny pockets of snow still remaining from the winter. It was a warm, calm morning, no wind at all. I was out on the backside of the Paw Tuckaway to meet some friends for a hike. I arrived early and decided to head out before them and meet them up at the tower, or at least somewhere on the trail up. So, I was heading up the South Ridge Trail, and like I said, it looked to be a beautiful spring day with no wind. As I am walking along, all of a sudden, without any warning, I hear a tree crack and fall. It scared the you-know-what out of me, because it was so calm and silent and it was only about 50 to 100 feet off the trail. So that spooked me. But to make matters worse, at roughly the same time the tree crashed down, there was a large, deep grunt-like sound, followed by a sort of squealing sound in the opposite side of the trail, but about the same distance off as the tree. So loud and abrupt sound of the tree coming crashing down, apparently scared, whatever was on the opposite side of the trail, too. After the initial crash of the tree and the sound of the animal, there was the familiar thudding and thrashing of the forest, as the thing that made the sound was out of there like lightning. Now, I'm only sharing this experience because of the overall proximity of events. I didn't see anything this day, but I heard plenty. I know what I heard could have been a bear or a moose, or was simply as spooked by the falling tree as I was. Whatever the case, I picked the nearest stick I could find and turned around and headed back toward the car to wait for my friend. To this day, I do not feel comfortable in the woods I grew up in when I am alone. On to the next one.
This happened in Kentucky, in Harlan County. The nearest town was Pineville. I was ginsenging, and I kept hearing what sounded like someone speaking Russian. The sound would come and go, and it really puzzled me, but I kept looking for ginseng. I had just found a big four fork and shouted out, Thank the Lord! And all at once, a rock about the size of a basketball went zipping by my head. It nearly hit me. I looked up to where the rock came from, and there stood two Bigfoot, a really large brownish red female Bigfoot with very large breasts. It was standing up the mountain and looking at me. It was about eight feet tall. Standing to the side of the large female was a younger Bigfoot. I could not tell if it was a male or a female, but it was as black as coal. It was much smaller than the female. I was scared to death and got out of there. At the bottom of the mountain, there was a small logging crew, and I think that maybe the mother and child Bigfoot had been around the hill above the loggers, watching them log. As I went up the mountain, our path must have just crossed. After I got home, I didn't tell anyone, as I thought they would just think I was crazy. I waited three days before I finally told my wife. On to the next one. This happened in Minnesota, St. Louis County. While driving just outside Eli City Limit, we saw what looked like a nine-foot-tall creature walking upright on two legs, crossing over the highway by Shagwa Lake. The creature was very tall, brownish-gray in color, and ran with a limp. On to the next one. This happened in Kentucky, in Bell County, nearest town was Pineville. We were cooking out at a shelter at Pine Mountain State Park. Around dark, there was a strange smell at first, and then a rock hit the trees over from us, and we heard breaking branches. We loaded up and left. That's the truth. I've never told anyone. That was five years ago. I won't go back up there and cook out after dark. Man, it was crazy. I never smelled that smell in my life or had a rock thrown at me while cooking out. I may be crazy, but the woman that was with me heard it too. It smelled kind of like a wet dog. On to the next one. This happened in Kentucky, in Letcher County, the nearest town was Jenkins. I was deer scouting, gun season was nearing. I was in a hollow called Dark Hollow, coming off the top of a ridge, what is known as Pine Ridge, at the end of an old logging and mining road. Just as I was about to step off the embankment to the logging mining road, I hear a loud whoosh. So loud, I'm sure my eyes crossed, and, short moments later, another whoosh. So, I yelled loud as I could, wanting to warn whatever it was that I was there. So, thinking it possibly might be a bear, elk, or big cat, I shot around from a thirty thirty, trying to show it along its merry way. Again, whoosh. I shot another round. A total of three times I shot into the embankment, trying to warn it that I wasn't there to play. I fumbled my cell phone out to call my brother. I wanted to try and get him to drive up close to where I was and try to scare it away. I found out he was trick-or-treating with his daughter and couldn't. So, I had to man up and get to my vehicle on my own, legs shaking. I backed away from the direction from the whooshing sound was coming from. I kept the embankment between me and the creature and looked back about fifty yards with blurry, watery eyes and seeing the thing just standing there. I had made it back to my vehicle. I will never forget that day. It was also getting foggy and misting rain. Some follow-up question. Describe the creature. 
I only seen that it was darkish brown and six to seven feet in height. This was roughly 50 to 60 yards away and about 35 minutes till dark. It appeared to be about 400 pounds of weight. No special features. What I mean is no muscular or bodily features. And, seriously, between the fear from its sound, my eyes were really watering. Not crying, but as in nerve damage from the fear. Oh, the sound. It was more like a howl than I guess whatever I'd been making. Woo sound from a wolf, and followed by a long shh sound like shh and fading. Woo shh. Maybe I did make the right sound. Have you been back there? Been back to that exact spot once. Been in general area a few times. Main Ridge runs along the highway, but a couple of miles away. Other reports, maybe 10 miles away at the closest. If you have encounters of your own you'd like to share, check out the description box below, where you'll find the email sstorysubmissions at gmail.com where you can send in your submissions to be read on the channel. You can also send in your fan emails. I love hearing from you guys. I hope you enjoyed those encounters. And if you did, be sure to hit that like button, leave a comment, and subscribe. I post new content every single day, so be sure to hit that notification bell, and you'll be notified exactly when that new content arrives on my channel. Again, thank you so much, and until next time, bye!